uh, yes. I, my yes. reception is, I'm yes. not hearing you very well. Uh, do, you, do you subscribe to any, uh, do you submit to any um, publishers in America? Yes, I do. Yeah. You're looking for somebody here stateside. Um, yeah, definitely. I always uh, find it positive. I always get positive responses in America. Yeah, yeah. we're we're looking at different places because I'm, I'm trying to get international and <laughs> you're trying to get <laughs> I've got good um, good contacts, especially on the East Coast. Yeah, East Coast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Got a list here somewhere. Hello, my dear friends. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the poetry reading with Fatal Friends. This, thank you, Sir Dharan Sir. Somebody is not having a good, you know, sound of health. Somebody is having, you know, festivals around the corner and miss. Celebrating it, pomp, and you know, it's of uh, you know, sounds. And some are in with uh, pain and down with pain in the walls, shellings, and you know, much of the things. But yes, we are here for your cause. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Ray. Good Whenever people joining here, they are try. They are you know, uh, you must understand you are contributing to the. Uh, to society in general, uh, for your uh, for certain cause through uh, the media through the means uh, through the medium of poetry, you know, through the expression, freedom. Uh, maybe it's your it's a kind of expression. Maybe they cannot uh, go out, you know, protesting or something like that. But yes, this is something. Some uh, maybe may a means of that. So please uh, let us begin with uh, our first guest. Uh, uh, please welcome Sri Dharan Porakode, who is an author of uh, 30 books and he is a avid, uh, you know, he is known to be a writer of children books and he is a lyricist and uh, uh, writes songs, composes songs, and he, you know, uh, dubbed for. Uh, yeah, what do you call uh, cartoon shows too? So please welcome Sridhar and Parakode. I think you are, I don't know whether I am audible. I am audible. Yes, yes sir. Go ahead. Yeah, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. Sir. Go ahead sir. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As usual, uh, it's the Malayalam poem, a short poem first. Mindata Madri. Mindata Madri means Mataya. Kandu Venagilo Mindata Madri. Chodi Chuvenal Parayata Madri. Tanado Tire Yadukata Madri. Vilichalo Motum Kelkata Madri. Anata Donum Marakata Madri. Where it to Nilkan Kariata Madiri, Yena Luntam Mil Agaluna Madiri, Namalekando Maracuna Madiri. And the English, yes. Yes. Yet, yet. Why eat yet? When I wanted to speak to you, you kept aloof and remained silent. When I wanted to speak to you, you kept aloof and remained silent. When I wanted you to come with me, you stood as if nothing heard and remained silent. When I wanted you to come with me, you stood as if nothing heard and remained silent. When I offered my beloved to you, you moved away taking nothing and remained silent. When I offered my beloved to you, you moved away taking nothing and remained silent. But I know well that you are remembering everything from your silence. But I know well that you are remembering everything from your silence. Thank you. Thank you very much. Silence is a lot. So please give it up for uh, Sridhar and Parakode. Uh, let's go. Uh, 
let's move on to our next poet. Our next poet has been down with health issues and she has been, but I am amazed that his uh, you know, activeness and the kind of inspiration that he holds in. But yes, please, uh, where is there? Ronnie? Ronnie, please go. Go ahead with your poem. And yes, don't uh, take stress and uh, read out, please. Rani, uh, turn on your mic. I appreciate y'all having me back again. Uh, I'm still kind of struggling. And I'm going to go ahead and go to this poem because it's long. But uh, basically the background, I'll embellish some of it, but 90% of it was true. So let me go and because this is a long one for you. So hold on here. Okay, can you still hear me, Kumar? Yes, Rani, go ahead. Okay. It's called, now I've had a bunch of mini strokes, but this one I had here September 30th was a little bit harder stroke than I've ever had, but it's called, it's, it's about my stroke, September 30th, 2023. And it's called Ghost of the Laughing Horse. Have you ever, have you ever been on the threshold of death or it's whispers in your ears and pulled you closer with its cold grasp only to give you its bitter taste? For I have, and it was on September 30th, 2023. It all began with tossing and turning all night long. And when I finally got out of bed, it was like electricity was playing in my head. Something was not right. I could feel it. I was busy. No, I had been busy for the past days. Didn't think nothing, nothing of it then. I just went about my ways, but somehow I felt today was different. Something just felt strange, for my thoughts were kind of distant, echoing through my mind. Everything was hazy. I went about doing my same routines, moving forward as if in a, in a scene. Around me, I felt like I was buzzing. Lights like stars surrounded my focus. Then a friend called, so I decided to go and visit just to get away for a while, to ship the moment, and to step forward ahead. Once in their place, we talked and spilled the time as I slowly faded like I was in another place or zone. The bright light grew, grew brighter. My head was swimming. I felt like I was drowning in some ethereal plane. Bright sparkles electrified my vision. So now to reel the tape forward a bit and to fade to slow mo in the ride back, I was drifting as the voice of my friend was echoing. As the bright light beckoned my sight, I thought I saw angels smiling, so hued in lavender and blue. Slowly I tried to answer, but I could only form one letter, word, no, no, no. As I got out of the ride, my feet felt like clay. They were moving, but I was not. My mind was so full of electricity as my visions blurred in the bright light. It was as if I was suddenly being beckoned to the bright white. Like someone was calling me, come on over, whispered in my ears, so beautiful, so mesmerizing. My feet gave away as I wandered in spirit form closer to the edge. In reality, I hit the ground like a rock. I skipped my ocean as if I was kicked out of the light. And I did return, but I was still spinning and reeling. I slowly got up and tried to stand. In my head was the voice calling me again. Come on, over. Just come to the light. White explosions filled my sight. Down I went again, trying hard to go to the bright light as my mind continued spinning. I swear I thought I saw the huge angels in lavender and blue calling to me, their wings surrounded in golden beams. As I lay and could not speak, reality slowly God smacked me. 
I reached for the light in my eyes, but I could not grasp it. I heard distant voices in my ears, my friend calling me, pleading for me to get up. As the light beckoned me, I could, could not touch its sound. Slowly I got on my feet. My legs felt like rubber. I was tasting the sound of the bright light again for it was not letting go. As the light twisted and the colors burst, my legs would not function. And slowly the light encompassed me in its brilliance and my body felt like water and I melted to the ground again. I felt like my time had come to go to the light. My mind was spinning and I was blinded. All reality was slipping away, only for a moment, but it seemed like a long time. Suddenly I rejected, or I, 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 was, I was rejected and the light would not let me in and I fell out of the spectrum. Slowly I was back in my body, but still in a daze and my vision still in a haze. I got to my feet again and somehow pulled myself into my friend's vehicle. All I heard was, let me call an ambulance over and over. All I could get out of, I get out with slurred speech was no, 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 home, home. I do not, I don't know how I made it in my house by myself, but I did. Into my bed, I fell saying to myself, if I die, I will die in my sleep in the peace of my own home. Hours later, I awoke relieved that I was still alive, but I was messed up, still not quite in focus and very weak. For the light was the essence of in a piece of eternity. Wait a minute. For the light was the essence of heaven in a piece of eternity. And my time to taste it was not today. Thank you. Very powerful, Rani. Light is ancient, indeed. We could, I could see that. You know, I could, uh, you know, that is a real time experience that he had. You know, he had his. Uh, uh, left, you know, side uh, stroke, and he had this paralyzed, you know, last week, and that is what he felt in moment. The, he, you know, uh, nobody was around to take care of him, so he was all by himself, pulling himself, and gathering the strength and all. Uh, please give a round Incredible of applause poem. to Rani. Yeah. Amazing uh, poem. It's an amazing sure. poem because uh, you know he's traced his medical journey. I don't know how many, I don't know anybody who's been able to do something like this. So congratulations, and you've been able to, you know, in a sense, uh, uh, you know, tell us what it's all about when this kind of thing happens, and you put it in poetry. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, that's remember his. <laughs> He's all alone, <laughs> man. He's, 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 uh, I mean, it's like, I salute you, Ronnie, and uh, thank you. Thanks for coming, and please take care of your health and don't get stressed. Uh, please call up, uh, please welcome our next poet. Our next po poet is joining us for the next time from, uh, he's from, I mean, it's like, uh, uh, Clive Osman, please, yes, uh, go ahead. <laughs> Mark, I can't usually do Sunday afternoon, so um, it's nice to be here. Um, I'm going to do two. Uh, most people that know me know. Hello, uh, could you could you increase your volume? Uh, this. Yeah, uh, sorry, uh, my microphone was on the floor. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to do two. Um, most people that know me know that I do mostly comedy stuff, uh, uh, but I'm going to do one serious one and one rather surreal one and the first one is the serious one just in case you can't tell the difference and uh, um this is um based on a dream um i do have a lot of um nightmares um and most of them you know they're unpleasant but then once you wake up they've gone and that's it but this one stuck with me and i wrote this poem and this is exactly how the dream went it doesn't make a lot of sense but this is exactly how the dream went. And even to this day, the dream was so powerful. Even to this day, I can still feel and picture everything that happened in that dream. 
Um, so um, it's called codeine genes because it was most probably caused by taking codeine. Uh, so outsized wasps at every turn. Winter hardened swarms swooping with a sting that burns, causes agony with its toxins, destroys the skin from in outside in, bringing panic to the masses, a morass of frantic fighting to escape the flash of hatred from insects as big as birds. But it gets worse. Those like me who don't get stung are on the run and stunned to find the world has rung the changes. Old certainties are disarranged as a new world order is in place. Diurnal, multicolored bats, misshapen rats and noises like I've never heard fill the senses as a chill descends upon my flesh. I'm on a road I know, but anxiety grows as people I once recognized mutate before my eyes. I hear a cry of people are dying, people are dying. A frozen lake that wasn't there last time I looked begins to bubble spewing deathly poison into the air. The only hope is the huddle of people gathered in the rubble of a steeple, offering solutions, but their resolution is not enough. People are dying. People are dying. The voices drift away. The world falls silent. So that's that one. I'm actually intending to turn that into a short story because everybody keeps telling me I should do. So, um, right, back to my more normal stuff. And this is called uh, You Never Know. You never know what each day will bring, what is happening or about to happen. Take yesterday, for example. I like to think I'm open minded, ready for any eventuality. But the last thing I expected was to walk into my office and find a penguin sitting at my desk reading the Bible. It's usually mucky magazines. I don't know if he was converted. He hasn't spoken to me since I mistook him for a badger. But as far as I can tell, he is still a penguin. And this got me thinking, you never know when your time is up. If he'd had a gun, the consequences don't bear thinking about. Or in this case, don't penguin thinking about, because there are no bears in this poem. Luckily for me and for the meerkat, he didn't. The meerkat? Yeah. He was trying to sell me car insurance. Not sure how he got in the office. I confiscated his key last week after he organised an Audrey and advertised it on Facebook. I had an office full of aroused meerkats and perverted insurance brokers. It was traumatising. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is make the most of every day. By the time that penguin gets to your house, he may have a gun or he may try to lure you into a religious cult. You just don't know. So make sure your loved ones know how you feel and keep all your doors and windows locked. There is, after all, a radicalised penguin on the loose and some kinky insurance brokers, which is even worse. Thank you. Oh, Glenn, that's quite satiric, I would say, but yes, that's true indeed. But yeah, I like the reading of your first one. That, that, that wonderful, wonderful reading, wonderful reading. Please do come and, uh, you know, every Sunday, I, I would love to have you always. Please give it up for Clive Osman. Thank you. Thank you, Clive. Thanks for coming. Next up is Naima Chamchon. Please welcome Naima Chamchon. Yeah. <laughs> no introduction. <laughs> As you <laughs> yeah, you're world famous. So <laughs> you're known to us. <laughs> okay. The imposter in the rooms that twinkle with crystal and opulence. The women with Modigliani necks be jeweled and be decked talking about young skin, exercise and nutrition of flamboyant designers, fashionably Parisian, camouflaged, complacent corpulence, men in Armani suits and Swiss watches, consuming business with malt whiskey, Anecdotes of St. Moritz and Apareski, an arcade of silver spoon swatches, 
a spectre occupying the void in hand-me-downs and Primark shoes, a day-tripper just passing through the type you usually avoid. Hair brittle and untamed, face conveying time's inflictions, no fillers or Botox injections. Expression caged and contained. The Cheshire cats who smile sweetly, tiptoeing around class discreetly. A barrage of plummeting playing cards as the Queen Horton stands guard. I inhabit my place completely. The advantaged advancing out of isolation, the fortunes that swell with predation. I am the stranger in my lady's chamber. Thank you. And the uh, second piece? The fall. The first leaves of autumn take their leave in September, as her fading simmer fishes like a dimming ember. There is no fear, still, I wonder why survival instinct accommodates your visit like an expected visitor. The crisp edges scratch against the pavement as they land. A beckoning hand which motions silently to the denouement. How I have struggled with the lows as recall taunted from the sleeping coves. How brutal they are after touching the stars. The irate winds carry away summer's debris as we gaze mournfully into the horizon and ponder the next crowning of the sun, the time that stretched into the abyss, the time we blinked and almost missed. You called it a smile to light up a room, a treasure measured in the flicker of an eye, twinkling like chandeliers against a satin sky, as if my teeth were an incandescent concerto, my lips spread like the wings of joy's sparrow, as the soul's windows ushered in June. Not my cat stopped calling as the rain started pouring, sighing at the sojourn's exit. When next will we sit like this, just you and I, as the seasons shuffle the skies? Thank you. Wow. What an engaging reading, uh, I must say, Naima. I mean, I was just thoroughly, you know, imbibed in your reading. I was just, you know, trying to pick those lines. Uh, so, <laughs> so beautiful, so beautiful. I wish I could read like you. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, but yes, it's all about learnings. And thank you. You're all strangers. Maybe you're stranger to ourselves sometimes. <laughs> so, uh, so that was Naima Chonchon, who's a, a wonderful writer and a well-known author. And she's an award-winning uh, poet as well. She recently has released a wonderful book. Um, yes, Naima, I can show it. Yeah, you, you're free to show it, you know, it's Thank like, you. and you could share the details in the chat box uh, so that, you know, other kids follow you. Thank you. That was Nama Chamchon. Thank you. Give a round of applause, my dear friends. Next up is, yes, absolutely, Ray Whitaker. 
Good morning, everyone. Good morning from Colorado. Um, I have a piece here that I was inspired to write based on the recent events out of Gaza. And it's called Arroyo, which is um, a, a Spanish word for a, a gully or a wash. Um, in the Arab world, you call it a wadi. But uh, here we go, Arroyo. I walk up into this high mountain following the watercourse way. These Colorado washes are untrodden, leading to the base of the front range where the sheer of the Rockies start, engaging with the blue sky and dirty clouds rushing down to the plains that recede to the Kansas grasslands. Where the buffalo liked once to roam, not where the likelihoods of modern men are, which is to say not the indigenous people, viewing them as having been placed for them on this earth by gods above, living off of them. I leave a solitary set of footprints up the red grainy wash, except the tracks, excepting for the tracks of the bighorn sheep and the crisscrosses from the occasional four toed clawed bear. The arroyo takes a bend. The wash turns and goes up into the elevation further. I seek not that distance. Resting on a flat-topped, iron-red included gray boulder, having reflections that have stopped me. Where, on this my resting place, I ruminate on the events happening in the world that seem to halt the progress of the growth of peace. It is the megalomaniacs, the egotists, the narcissists, stripped character dictators, those purveyors of malice, these commanders of the evil practices of warring, the maiming, the ring of fire eclipse on our human growth, perverting, causing the scarcity of barrenness, smelling the blood on Ashari al-Arabi. They are to blame worldwide, not just in the Middle East or in Gaza, but also on the Eastern European plains of Ukraine, to the central escarpment here into the Blue Ridges taking what someone else has is all about privacy, poverty. Thank you. Very powerful expression, sir. Very timely. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, it, the situations in the world do promote a lot of anger in me, and I try to write it out, but some of it's worth hearing and some of it isn't. That's all I have. And thank you for the opportunity, Prasanna. Thank you very, very much for having me be a part of your. Thank your you, sir. It's, such an, it's such an honor having you. And, you know, this is the one, maybe this is what we wish to have always. Thank you. That was Ray. Please welcome our next poet. Our next poet is, yes, a brilliant, uh, is a very lively poet. Please welcome Unmesh Mohitkar. Thank recently you. uh okay thanks for the opportunity uh here i go this is an old poem i think i wrote long back so just here we go left in the lurch left in the lurch by everyone to die suffer time passed he survived Stronger than the weathered tree, aged like delicious wine, fire in his eyes, tender like the fireplace warmed. The joke was on them. In despair, they suffered his peace, love, scared. Again, they left him. Again, they left him. And this is very short, a short one. They punch him to ground. They punched him to ground, flattened, dead. 
Leave him to rise from the ashes. Leave him to rise from the ashes. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Leave him to rise from the ashes. Beautiful. <laughs> Small yet, you know, short tells but yet powerful. That was Yunmesh. Please give a round of home. Uh, applause and yes, join his open mic on Fridays. Have been sound every Sunday, uh, every Friday, 9 p.m. Uh, in the standard time in the UK, 11 30 p.m. So you could join us. Uh, up next is yes, Jaya Kalyan Raman, who is a wonderful poet. Now she is gonna write, yes, please. Could you turn on your mic, please? I'm sorry. Good evening, everybody. It's good to be back. I took a two week break because my whole home was being painted. And this has been followed by me being rather unwell. So I've been in and out of the hospital lately. And right now I'm going through some iron infusion because I'm terribly anemic. But I did need to join here so that I feel rejuvenated. I've put out some random thoughts. I don't know if I can call this poetry, but I, like Ray Whitaker, am very shaken by what's happening you know, in the Gaza Strip. And it takes me back in history to all the wars we've, we've had. So I'm just written a few random thoughts, not quite poetic in form. I feel no joy or happiness living every day in, sorry, with a world in such an awful mess. I feel no joy or happiness, living every day in gratitude for things even of small magnitude. Somewhere along life we forgot that no man is an island. We forgot that we are all connected, whether we believe in the Darwin's theory of evolution or that God created man in his image. Either way, we are all connected. Hate has caused a lot of problems in this world which we call home. What gave us humans the right to take a life, to kill communities across the globe? If all men were born equal, then how are some men more equal than others? How is one country superior to another? How long will you fight for land that doesn't belong to anyone? You didn't inherit it by virtue of your birth. Do you feel an iota of guilt or a sense of victory as you gun down a human life? If you want peace, pre prepare for war. But war never solved any problem. It only created more. Some images haven't faded from my mind's eye. Of the naked child as the napalm balls, bombs fell. Of a young mother not granted asylum, handing over her baby to a stranger at the border of a new land. Of the young who burned their frustrations on the dance floor only to be gunned down. Or the father who rejoices at the news of his eight-year-old daughter's death, caused by a bomb blast and not in the hands of a terrorist. We know that peace is a condition under which mankind was meant to flourish. Yet peace does not exist of its own will. It depends on us 
on our courage to build it and guard it and pass it on to future generations. Thank you. Yeah. In reaction to the moment, I would say, very well put, ma'am. Very well put. Very descriptive, but yes, uh, very touching. Everything going into it, yeah, the, this poem that you know followed uh, the present condition. Thanks for coming and thanks. Please take care of your health and get well, get back soon. And yes, thank you. That was Zaya Kalyana Rahman. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> As uh, you know, uh, maybe I should follow the advice. So I think uh, I could uh, read out my poem. <laughs> maybe. Yes, Rupali, ma'am. It is for you. You survived in the jungle of dreams where in chimera of wishes turned out to be realistic images. You were in the momentary thoughts enjoying the environs. I was watching your moods try to make you sense the reality of dreams and reveries. But you were so indulged in the self, least bothered, least bothered to hear the advice. Denied my presence now here at the threshold of self-destruction. Devastated by your feelings, nobody would listen to the pleas when you will be at the brink of losing the breath. You have chosen the path of believing, living alone. How could you expect one to be at your bedside during your lost days? Now come out of your dreams. Just open your eyes. See the real emotions. Open your eyes. It could be it's just a context. <laughs> it could be related to anything. So that, that was my point. Please welcome our next poet. Our next poet is joining us for the first time. Please welcome <laughs> Shyamala Khanna. He's a wonderful writer. He's a teacher, retired teacher and a badminton uh, player as well. And she is an inspiration for the uh, women around the world. And she is a, a, a giving a much, you know, a, a, a paying a, a good contribution to the society. You know, so can please welcome Shyamala Khanna. Shamala Khanna, yes. Uh, Ma'am, please unmute your mic. Shamala Khanna. Uh, she joined us for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe she's Shamala, ma'am. Please, if you are there, uh, you are there. But uh, okay, let's uh, let's jump across to our next poet. Our next poet is joining us for the first time from Indonesia. At Aklima Ankahi, Indonesia or Bangladesh? Yes. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. I'm from Bangladesh. Yes, Bangladesh. Sir. Please. please. Ask me. <laughs> yes, please go ahead. My first poem name is World Vivek. Ma'am, could you could you raise the volume of your you know computer or whatever? Yes, okay, now? A little bit. Mm. Maybe for, for me it is, uh, you know, I could. Uh, yes, go ahead, go ahead. Yes. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, but the voice is very low, so that is. Uh, <laughs> but uh, here is full. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Thank you. World be back. Morning isn't good. Even noon and night are the same. Who are chasing our goodness? Think world Vivek knows it well. It is you who are the vigilant warden of it. Our voice echoes on the cosmological world. We have with the present, working by the past blankly. Now spread your conviction in the hands of the unborn. Uh, may I second, please? Migratory soul. My soul is resting here under an umbrella, hearing the rhythmic roar of deep waves, observing dead western shells, heart quivers. They come from mysterious abysmal barge. After completing their life journey, looking at the vast open sky, 
I whisper to feel the chariot wind. When are you taking my migratory soul to that unspotted sea of empty garden? Soon, heart filled with an obscure pain. Thank you. Beautiful, ma'am. Beautiful reading. Beautiful reading. Uh, please uh, keep coming. That was uh, Aklima and Kahi from. Uh, Aki, Aklima Aki. Aki. Yeah. Yes. Sorry for that. Uh, uh, thanks for coming. Please give a round of applause and uh, keep inspiring by reading your poems, ma'am. Thank you. We love to have you always. Uh, yeah. Please welcome our next poet. Our next poet, as I introduced you earlier, please welcome Siamala Khanna. Ma'am, please turn on your mic. Unmute your mic, ma'am, please. Sir? Yes, that, yes. Can yes. you hear me now? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. This is something I wrote when I went to the Hiroshima Memorial at uh, Hiroshima in Japan. So, as the wind whistles across the cemetery, you hear a wail, a whimper a child's plaintive cry. The years have flown, but the pain lingers on. Where, when do we stop? Help me, water, please. An infant clung to his mother's breast, too weak to move. Water, water, some water, please. Another half-crazed mother called out to her near-dead child. Open your eyes, open your eyes. The thirst and heat will kill them all. As sure as the black rain will peel off the skin to the bone. Today I walk around the Memorial Park. The blazing red tulips smile in their beds. The young parents ride in pairs, kids in baskets behind. Another family celebrates the balmy weather, stretched out under the trees. Conversations and laughter, a happy day. Far removed from the 6th of August, 1945. That's it. Far removed. Uh, it is picturesque and very rare. Rupali, I would, I would like to react on that, maybe. Yes, man. Thank you. That was yes, uh, very, very moving poem and the context of what is happening and can happen again. You know, yes. your poem is a warning. You know, when we write, when we protest about these things through our poetry, we are not trying to talk about the past. We are saying this must never happen again. But it's that happening is the again. Messages. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This must never Thank happen again. Thank yeah. you so much, Yama. <coughs> Thank you, ma'am. Thanks for coming and thanks for you know uh, letting us listen your poem and uh, thanks for sharing. And please do come and keep inspiring us. It's the medium Thank you. we try to, you know, <laughs> shout out. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you uh, very much. Please welcome our next poet. Our next poet is a regular body spend. He's a love, he's a beautiful poet, and he is a very humble person. Please welcome Dominic Windrum. Thank you. Uh, I, too, I too would like to talk about uh, war. Um, and to paraphrase uh, Milan Kundera, who said, the struggle of humankind against power is a struggle of memory against forgetting. And with our current media, things are soon forgotten one way to remember the next. And that, I think, is rather tragic. But here it is. It's called Perpetual Warfare, inspired by the Hurt Locker. Deadly drones zoom across bruised black skies. Moonlike landscapes brewing with burnt out cars and shell buildings expose well-crafted lies about liberation as guiding star. For well, this is brutal conquest by the West's modern model, its vast military industrial complex, hell bent to test advanced so called 
peacekeeping weaponry. Machinery reduces flesh to dust, just like the wicked splintering of trust in the twinkling of an eye. I know you might be one who's persuaded by all the propaganda that calls itself news, but please do not fall for it. Virtue's law should remain firm within your heart and soul. Always engage in extensive research before you praise and sanctify the worst among us. Remember that those who drape themselves in flags do not represent you, yet you follow them from cradle to grave, or do not vote for them. Also, those who control the media control the mind. Pay attention to death tolls, don't be blind. Once you're free, repeat again and again, or oh, not in my name, or oh, not in my name. That's the first one. And the second one is called Manichaean Media, and it's inspired by the groundbreaking work of Noam Chomsky. Or Manichaean patterns of thought that only appeal to those who take things in literal ways now dictate who we choose to side with. But life is, more, is far more complex than all the utter poppycock of crass shock jocks who love to normalize the unthinkable on a daily basis, it seems. Notice media in their Manichaean ways attempt to create cartoon heroes and villains when in point of fact, they actually conflate good with evil. Do they choose to put their heads in the sand or are they truly ignorant about what is really going on in the world of today? I haven't quite decided. Moral truisms are swept under the carpet. If it's wrong for one side to do something that appalls, it is wrong for us to do likewise, don't you think? Or oh, Oxbridge brains are bought by state interference. The news is not news due to obvious edits, historic bias, and noteworthy omissions. Behind your great walls, the dark strangers are always hidden from view. Or how you dehumanize them. As for saluting flags, that is jingoism. Samuel Johnson thought it was the last resort of the scoundrel. True virtue resides elsewhere. I just say to you, watch where the blood money goes, root of all evil. I may be vexed, but as Blake proclaimed, tigers of wrath are wiser than horses of stern instruction. In these times, there are alas increasingly few who are willing to raise their heads above parapets. Watch out for the cheerleaders. They don't self-reflect, only perpetuate war. Thank you. Oh my God, what would I say? All are serious poems today. <laughs> a bit of lightness is also required, no? You know, during, but yes, uh, that was uh, profound, I would say. That was profound. Thank you, Dominic. Thanks for coming. Up next is our mentor, Dr. Rupali Sarkar Gaur. Please welcome. Thank you so much, Prasanna. I think that the seriousness comes from what is happening around us. And as poets, we respond to our surroundings and what is happening. Uh, we can't talk of the nightingale, you know, when everything is falling apart. So today I had selected a funny one, but then I found that I really couldn't do that. But it's a poem about some, uh, you know, it's uh, if wars begin in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed. And this is the preamble to the United Nations. I've taken the title from there. But as a military daughter and spouse, I have worked closely with military families. I'm thus a personal witness to the mental condition called PTSD which is post-traumatic stress disorder, which is common among soldiers who have served in conflict zones. The recurrent intrusive reminders of the traumatic event, including distressing thoughts, nightmares, and flashbacks, make the person feel the event is happening again. One may experience extreme emotional and physical reactions to reminders of the trauma, such as panic attacks, uncontrollable shaking, in layman's language, it is also called shell shock. So this poem is called Wars Begin in the Minds of Men. Uh, we glorify war, and this tells you the truth about war. Rat-a-tat-tat, rat-a-tat-tat, -tat, the guns go. 
Pain shrapnels through my throbbing head. The smoke is acrid and choking. Somebody is using a rake inside me. I can taste blood dribbling into my mouth. There are shadows behind the chinar tree and crawling figures everywhere. My hands hurt, tremble, and I'm thirsty. Bullet ridden, I must drag myself into the ravine. Who is shouting Shiva Shiva? Who is screaming Allah Allah? Oh God save us, we are in hell. My eardrums will burst. A sudden cool breeze blows over the brick terrace. The mosquito net torn where the bayonet had pierced it. A shredded, fibrous, webbed, netted piece of claustrophobia. A jackal howls across the vast open maidan. It's past midnight. The moon is half gone. Like all night since they brought him home, Sipoy, Ram Singh, wakes up howling, gun in hand, rushing at terrorists who just won't go away. He had traded ripened wheat fields for minefields and mayhem. It wasn't his fault. It was for the victory of the flag. You know, the way we get everybody worked up, you know, you have to die for your country. So you, sometimes his leg made of wood on which he painfully stood, drew village louts to hear his story, full of brave battle and shining glory. Then slowly, other stories spread about the devils inside his head. Ram Singh has gone mad. It is always good, they said, for a soldier to be dead. A dead soldier is covered in glory and others will tell his true story. Broken in limb and living with nothing more to gain, his nightmares of war and pain are no longer fit for the same. Only he could hear the bullets rain. Only he could see his life rain. Only he could feel his mind go insane. So this is a condition that we are not aware of. You know, when we, when we incite people, young people to, to die, for their country. So you have this great war poet, uh, Wilfred Evan, Owen, who said that uh, don't go back and tell your children this lie that is great and glorious to die for your country. So in the context of what is happening, uh, Prasanna, we, have, we are in a forum with you expressing our angst. And I think that it is what we are meant to be here for. Thank you so much. Only he could hear. Only he could hear. What an expression. I mean, it's like every, uh, beautifully you own it, ma'am. Um, beautifully expressed. How, what could I say? Thank you, Anna. This is the first time I've read this poem out because it was the right place to do it. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. You know, my husband, who my husband who's gone through a number of wars and, you know, he's been injured and wounded in battle. Many times, even now, you know, he wakes up at night, he's He's howling, you know. I have to tell him, no, no, calm down. Because this is what happens with soldiers, you know, and we are not aware of it. Understand, ma'am. But the pain that, you know, the, the visuals, you know, that occupies your mind and it, it falls back in your mind. And that keeps coming in the hallucinated form. And, and yes. Definitely will be there. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, so this is continuing, uh, turning to be a serious uh, ritual uh, recital, but yes, you cannot. <laughs> you cannot. Please welcome our next poet. Our next poet is CAS, a very wonderful lady, and she has a, created a niche of herself. And you know, maybe she is a Renaissance woman. That is what she is known to be as. And Madam Josephine. All right. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, ma'am. Please. Yes, uh, my mic is on, right? Okay, I am reciting. Okay, first, let me see. Okay. Okay, my first poem is titled Thorn in the Flesh. You pout and bow your head, avoiding my gaze. You turn your back to me. How ugly are your ways? When sensitivity hits, you don't reply when asked, making me wait so long 
till I lose my cool and burst. But you're quick to hit back, even when I'm asked. Your mood swings and tantrums done uncontrollably. Your mind's abnormality, this dark side of you, often makes me feel you are a thorn in the flesh. That is dedicated to a former assistant of mine who really stressed me so much <laughs> that she's out. You know, I almost died because of her. Anyway, so that's the past. <laughs> so now my next poem is a more positive, is a positive one. Live fully now. Feel the wind brush against your face. Wear your dress with sequins and lace. Know the culture of another race. Understand their belief in salvation and grace. Arm yourself with knowledge and creativity. Study at your choice pool for your PhD. Turn your hobby into a profession for more money. You'll be thankful you won't ever get hungry. Work hard, be not a lazy cow. Buy the dream house your money will allow. Invest in business while you are young now. To successfully do it, do research to find out how. Travel inland and to other countries too. Unravel the mysteries of Tibet and Peru. Visit the Dakinis caves, find your guru. Take lessons in music, know how to draw. Know about life in every way. Meditate always, reflect and pray. While the sun shines, make hay. Treasure the minutes of each passing day. Study higher teachings. Know why there, there's pain. Why in abandoning evil, you have much to gain. Why the sun shines and why there is rain. Why some like you, while some leave you in disdain. Do not be used to procrastination. With clear mind, plan well on your action. Act today while you totally function. Love fully, treating no one with derision. Yesterday is gone and on. Tomorrow is yet to come. What matters is the now unsung. Live fully now while you're young. Good evening, everybody. Wow, that was messes in rhyming. So beautiful, ma'am. So beautiful. Oh, that's thank really, you. That's really wonderful. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks for coming. That was ma'am Josephine. Please give a round of applause. Next up is yes, uh, this is a member of Poetry Society of India, is a well known poet and is a scholar. Please welcome Radha Chakravarti. Radha Chakravarti. Radha. Uh, Yes, ma'am, please. Thank you uh, for this opportunity. It's wonderful to be back with this group again. Uh, I'll read two poems, and uh, I think uh, at least one of them resonates with what many of us are talking about today. It's called Peace Process. The peace I seek is not the peace of the ascetic in solitary meditation on a treetop, not the peace mongered by leaders contriving treaties between warring nations. Not the false peace of mind bought through fake charity and public posturing to hide a guilty conscience. But the peace that descends with a sudden shower of rain greening the earth after a drought. The peace I seek comes unbidden amid the noise and bustle, sweat and blood of common humanity, when we step outside our walls, cross the threshold of our separate sheltered homes to brave the future together, dreaming of rebuilding our endangered, lonely planet. The peace I seek is the calm we feel when we face the darkness, 
not alone, but holding hands, you and me, together. And uh, the second uh, poem uh, is called Uprooted, and uh, it's about my thoughts about the in environment, but it also uh, invokes my ancestors and my personal history. It's called Uprooted. Fallen tree on concrete sidewalk, thirsty roots clawing the air, struggling to breathe, screaming silently for the sucker of your own familiar soil, where all these years I saw you live and grow, blossom and bear fruit and spread your shade, while in your green branches joyous songbirds nested, fallen tree, forgotten for bear, my ancestor, uprooted to make way for the merciless coldness of concrete. Your plight robs me of my breath. I remember now my human forebears uprooted like you from native soil by the concrete hard harshness of a land divided under the foreign rule, displaced persons forced to seek homes on alien, unfamiliar soil in a different world, indifferent to the fate of trees or men who stand in the way of progress, the high road of history. Dispensable, left to live or die in an alien atmosphere, for the climate of our globe has changed. Fallen tree, your exposed roots lay bare the callousness of a world that destroys trees, fish, birds, people, our own ancestral roots to build in steel, concrete, and plastic. It's developing story of growth even as it blindly takes its own grave. Thank you. Peace. Very well uh, put, ma'am. Very well, you know, you. in your way. And yes, in the name of development, callousness taking, you know, coming in. So, so I, I I must say it's thankful to you all. You know, you're making me not to read books, but you're making me to listen and, you know, <laughs> ask the knowledge. You know, seriously, I'm saying, um, but that's the way I'm going. How do you all put this ability, brilliant expression? Please give it up for the Radha Chakravati. Thanks for coming, ma'am. Please do come and, uh, you know, every Sunday. Thank you. It's such a Thank pleasure you. having you around. Please welcome our next poet. Our next poet is, a, you know, he's a wonderful artist. He's something like, um, yeah, uh, I think he could explain it. Levry Adrian Sia from Indonesia. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Prasanna Kumar. And good night, everyone from Indonesia. My name is Lepri Ardiansa. I am Indonesian poet. And it's a very cool opportunity and, and I'm honored I could join for the second time now to this wonderful um, poetry recite, reciting events. And I will recite uh, poetry I uh, wrote on May 7, 2022, title, What the Fiends We Fight. What to what tonight? Where dawn of future being fight? Where the health has been down fight? Where the wealth on meet dreary night? Where other threat lessons the like? What the fiends we fight? To the dire borderlands, we fight the freed. To the broken agreements, we fight for bread. To the violated line, we fight the seed. To the torturing fiends, we fight and dead. What the fiends we fight? 
what to watch tonight. Thank you. Wonderful. Sense. Yeah. Fight, fight for the rights, fight for the voice, fight for, you know, freedom, fight for the peace. Thank you. Thanks for coming. You're most welcome. That's Thank you. Kind of that was liberty. Okay. Please give a round of applause, my dear friends. Up next is, yes, uh, please welcome. I love this couple. You know, I just, I, I, I wanted to, you know, write a poem on them. But yes, please welcome a lovely couple, Dr. Ganga Lakshmi Patnaik and Shama Prasad Shama Prasad Patnaik. Yes. Good evening, everyone. It's a great pleasure to join in the Open Life Recital video program organized by Kumar Prasanna, founder admin for Tally Brains. I would like to recite a poem on the occasion of Navaratri. I am debuted. All are talking about reciting about war, all these things, but I will now talk about the devotional atmosphere and on the occasion of Navaratri I want to recite a poem Navaratri means nine nights Navaratri honors the Devi the great goddess Ma Durga nine forms of Mata Durga worshipped during Navaratri forms are Ma Sailaputri number two Ma Brahmacharini number three Chandraganta Number four, Ma Kushmanda. Number five, Ma Skandamata. Number six, Ma Katyaini. Number seven, Ma Kaladatri. Number eight, Ma Mahagauri. Number nine, Ma Sigidatri. Now I will recite a poem. The title is Ma Sailaputri. Navaratri starts with Sailaputri. It's the another name of Ma Goddess Durga. Now I would, I would recite an English poem. Title is Invoke Ma Saila Putri. Invoke Ma Saila Putri. That we have been waiting since one year. Wimpling, wincing, leaping. To feel the presence of the goddess Durga and obtain blessing. Where can grief make a stay? Health, happiness, prosperity are treasured. Good wishes, desires of heart, immense love, grace will come forward. Long ago, someone very dear told Jagat Janani, alone cement scraps, like darkness with the true power of love, safety, and transcendental consciousness. Ma Shaila Putri is free as air, adaptive as water. Fires is fire, pure form of patience and devotion, compassionate as earth, serene as space, and absolute form of mother nature. Now, this is my prayer to Ma Sailaputri to restore peace and harmony in the state, to gain fearlessness from evil power and to fight with the evil spirits. Now my recitation is over and now I am going to my second recitation because today is the birthday of Abdul Kalam ji, Abdul Kalam. Today birth anniversary of Dr. Abdul Kalam, poet, writer, scientist, former president whose birthday is observed as World Students Day. Today is World Students Day. The poem runs like this. I pluck youth icon Kalam's book, wings of fire to know, motivation and moving ahead in every page. Number two line, every page of his book, you are born to blossom. This is another name. You are born to blossom is success on students, teachers, world's pillars. Reading his book 
ignited minds i forget all that i had read all that i had learned the super awesome every word in adanya sahas is life philosophy and every page of mission india is youth vision his poetry book life tree and thrones captivates poetry lovers by his poetic emotions reading all his books i become humble purifies my bone trains up my tongue to him i salute recipient of india's highest civilian awards deserved bharat ratna padma vibhushan padma bhushan thanks thank you all the recitation is over thank you ma'am ah, that was i would uh, go to rupali ma'am and uh, ask for her to her to react yes thank you so much there's some sort of a noise going on somebody is i think mic is on uh thank you so much for this lovely poem uh dr ganga lakshmi but you started by saying that we are all talking about war the goddess arises after nine days and nine nights of fighting a war and you know she is in absolutely in battle form so i think uh, the goddess durga when i look at her she is uh, she is fighting a battle and it's wonderful that you were able to give her many many aspects of the goddess there's so many aspects of her but one of them is the destroyer of evil and the evil here is the terrorist vaishatur who is making life hell for everybody so thank you so much for your beautiful poem very fitting very fitting the occasion thank you ma'am thank you dr pari ma'am thank you ganga lakshmi patnaik ma'am thanks for reading out uh, that is uh, you know that, that's the style of yours that's the you know peculiarity of yours you to pick out the the theme and every day you got it gets the theme and you will you know read out and read, uh, write and uh, read out so please welcome our next poet uh, yes yama prasad patnaik is <laughs> better off <laughs> yes you can say yeah thanks prasanna sir for uh, inviting me and giving this opportunity to read out my poems sir and good evening all friends uh, all over the world a hearty welcome from odisha the land of lord jagannath first of all i am going to recite uh, one odia poem that is my mother tongue that is all about tolerance the title of my poem is sahanashilata ek divya anubhuti a divine experience tolerance a divine experience sahanashilata manavikatar ek sarvotch divya alokik gunar anubhuti sahanubhuti prem daya ebam sahanashilata atmaru sidha salakh utpanna hue eha martyar prani mananko madhyare bhagavan ko khojibar एक प्रमुख मध्यम यही सर्वोत्तम गुणर अधिकारी अनेक मानव अति मानव स्तर को उन्नत हो पारे मानक दिव्य अलौकिक शक्ति अनुगामी हो आम सर्वशक्ति प्रभु सत्ता अनुभव कर निज को धन्य मन कर इतर मानव भूल रुशीलन एवं पाप को क्षमा करने एक स्वतंत्र मापदंड सहनशील सहिष्णु हेबाई मनुष्य आध्यात्मिक जगरण आवश्यक एवं अपरिहार्य लोक मान प्रति तुम कि मानसिकता पोषण तथा व्यवहार कर ता महत्वपूर्ण नुहे बर तुम मान विरोधी एवं समालोचक प्रति तुम सहिष्णुता एवं व्यवहार यार महानता दर्शाई था सहनशीलता होदर सेवा एवं सहानुभूति एक सर्वोच्च कार्य दुर्बल एवं अक्षम मनीष प्रति दया एवं सहनशीलता शक्तिर प्रकृत परिचायक मानविक अधिकार सुरक्षा अहिंसा सह सहनशीलता अंगांगी भाव जड़ित हिंसा अत्याचार एवं अन्याय कदापि यार परिभाषा नुहे 
ଏହି ସମସ୍ତ ଦୁଷ୍ଟ ପ୍ରବୃତ୍ତିଗତ ଦୁର୍ଗୁଣର ଉନ୍ମୂଳନ ହିଁ ସହନଶୀଳ ଗୁଣର ମହାନ୍ତକୁ ହୃଦୟଙ୍ଗମ କରାଯାଏ ହିଂସା ଏବଂ ଘୃଣା ମନୋଭାବ କଦାଚିତ ପ୍ରଦାନ କରେ ନାହିଁ ବିଶ୍ୱକୁ ଏହି ଶବ୍ଦର ମହତ ଉଦ୍ଦେଶ୍ୟ ସମସ୍ତ ମାନବିକ ତତ୍ତ୍ୱ ଗୁଣରାଜି ଯଥା ସ୍ନେହ ପ୍ରେମ ଦୟା ଆତ୍ମଦର୍ଶନର ଊର୍ଦ୍ଧ୍ୱରେ ଏହି ଦିବ୍ୟ ଅଲୌକିକ ଶକ୍ତିର ସ୍ଥାନ ତ ବିଶ୍ୱାସ ମାଇ ଓଡ଼ିଆ ରେଣ୍ଡିସନ ନାଉ ଆଇ ଏମ ଗୋଇଂ ଟୁ ରିସାଇଟ ମାଇ ସେକେଣ୍ଡ ପୋଏମ ଦ ଟାଇଟଲ ଅଫ ମାଇ ପୋଏମ ଇଜ ମୁଭ ଫରୱାର୍ଡ ଇଟ ଇଜ ଏନ ଇନ୍ସପିରେସନାଲ ମୋଟିଭେସନାଲ ପୋଏମ ମୁଭ ଫରୱାର୍ଡ ହିୟର ଇଟ ଗୋଜ ଇଫ ୟୁର ଭେଞ୍ଚର ଷ୍ଟଣ୍ଡ ଆଉଟ ଫ୍ୟୁଟାଇଲ ନେଭର ସବମର୍ଜ ଇନ ଲାମେଣ୍ଟେସନ forget follies miseries of bygone move forward towards new destination relieve yourselves from mental agonies and physical strains by serving human kind improve your latent skills through meditation to face tough crises be optimistic about future which might have wonders in store if someone has betrayed forget and forgive divinely shun vengeance he will sure to repent for his mistakes and misdeeds continue to help distressed and downtrodden to fulfill god's objective have faith and interest on inner voice to surmount disasters listen to the core of your soul for supreme tones your inner self is the temple of living god uplifts you don't worry if sun sets another glorious sun awaits down past attainments and glories would worry in symmetry of extinction you shall be venerated forever for your magnanimity magnanimity and virtues and that is the end of my second poem and that is my presentation thank you for watching and listening excellent sir excellent Uh, you know the shahanshilta is the highest form of a uh, highest quality that human should possess and that is so beautifully expressed in in your odia language please poets bring in your uh, mother tongue uh, as well uh, so that you know you could can has the quality you could understand the uh, beauty of you know the uh, nativity and all so so that is the I thing i will explain but uh, there is a paucity of time so yeah. <laughs> thank you the... that is beautiful and the uh, second one as uh, as well you know this uh, kind of inspiration and all please welcome uh, please give a round of applause to shyam prasad patnaik and the ganga lakshmi patnaik as well please uh, welcome our next poet our next poet is til kumari sharma from nepal <clears throat> okay namaskar for everybody and prasanna ji Okay, now I am going to uh, recite a poem about drinking wine of writing. Unconsciously or consciously waking in the dream, writing in my hand, asleep in dream vision, writing appears from warm of mind, waking at midnight to write something, sound of ring appears, closing eyes, I dreamt of leading world in my palm, equality for all. I love must. No domination with a discrimination holds me tight. No night I feel delight is high in dark night. Wine of creativity makes me awake at night. Writing is a wine to me, addiction to me, fetching truth in that wine of writing. confused and feeling alone writing appears a soul made of universe writing appears a soul made of universe okay thank you this much okay thank you for every friends and person ji thank you thank you till till ma'am thank you for coming uh, i like your reading today it's a kind of eerie me you know it's like you know so much so okay thank you very much thank you very much <laughs> i was scared you know i was like uh, i was so i just jokes apart but yes it's good 
<laughs> thanks for coming please welcome our next poet uh, our next poet is thank uh, santosh kumar pokharal who is a very well known poet he is a multilingual and uh, you know what he call it bahubashi so please welcome santosh kumar pokharal please but, but, but before that please give a round of applause to til kumari sharma yes thank you yeah good evening from nepal dear friends and uh, of course good morning and good afternoon wherever you are from and uh, uh, for the last few days i am very sad about the ongoing war between hamas and israel and other countries also have joined uh, there's there's really a pity because i am seeing a world war hovering already so i have been continuously writing anti war poems so today allow me to read out my two anti war poems in english and uh, if you allow only few lines while concluding my poems i will read out in hindi so i think that the poets are those who can honestly raise their voices against a war there is none other than the poets to do this job i think because poets are full of pathos full of compassion and karuna and as for going poet from odisha said sanshilata it is tolerance who tolerate to some limit but when there is brutality atrocities and injustice in the world we should raise our voices we cannot do anything because the missiles will not listen to us the bomb will not listen to our voices but we should keep on calling the world for world peace let me start my poems love at this thought laugh at this thought stop the war deploy demise of civilians irrespective of the country they belonged to i go with the general people who have with regimes nothing to do deploy demise of civilians irrespective of the countries they belonged to i go with the general people who have with a regime nothing to do civilians of israel and those of palestine are the same humans to me russians and ukrainians also the same and should the same remain to be i raise my voice i raise my voice against woes absurd voices for peace are now not hard ammunition burst and brings the holocaust and humans are gradually turning to dust for a patch of land for a patch of land woes are being found at the cost of lives and i laugh at this thought and i laugh at this thought the first poem dedicated to the ongoing war between israel and hamas others have already joined 
And Russia is also going to join probably to Hamas, which is a very, very sad thing and very dangerous thing, which is going to lead to World War III. The second poem is Hunger and War. Hungry people have no identity. Their identity is mere, is a mere hunger. They struggle to stake it and they die. This structure, a poem, I think that I have, I have, I am going to establish this genre, which I have published in my book, The War and Other Poems, where the last line of East Stanger is about 50% of the foregoing line. So hungry people have no identity. Their identity is mere hunger. They struggle to stake it and they die. It dates back to the immense immemorial past. It dates back to the immemorial past. We don't know how long will it last. Hunger is what may cause a holocaust. Don't you defy. Hunger can be a cause of war, as a wars from hunger aren't far, both from the same womb spring. You know why. Hunger wages war. Hunger dies. Those who die are hungry guys. Hunger wages war. Hungry die. Hunger dies. Those who die are hungry guys. The war will remain unending here as long as it's nigh. As long as it's nigh. I finished my two poems. I want to conclude with few lines in Hindi. Gaza shahar ko samarpit. Ek bada sa dhama ka hua. Gubaro se dhag gaya agas. Imarate daik uti aur dheer ho gai. Ab malwe ke dheero mein badal gaya hai. Shahar. Waha Gaza dha. Ek bada sa dhama ka hua. गुबारों से डह ढक गया आकाश इमारतें दहक उठी और ढेर हो गई अब मलबे के ढेरों में बदल गया शहर यह गाजा था लोगों ने दम तोड़ दिए बच्चे जल रहे थे और अभी भी जलने जा रहे हैं अब बस भी करो अब बस भी करो थैंक यू थैंक यू very well resonated sir but please observe the time my dear friends three means maximum four or maximum five not beyond that thank you thanks for coming and thanks for uh, uh, you know uh, voicing out your uh, poem, you know poetry and expression uh, for the words and all uh, that was santosh my dear friends please uh, give a round of applause to santosh kumar pokaral uh, please welcome our next poet our next poet is a very well known poet uh, she writes in hindi bengali and english as well please yes <laughs> jai shri re please stay on my dear friends you got line of poets no. Good evening, good evening, all my friends, and uh, happy Navratri and our Duga Puja also. First, my first poem is Bengali. This is regarding our lifestyle and life leading, which is controlled by our wall clock pendulum. Wall clock pendulum. Pendulum dictate our lifestyle and life leading. First poem is, Jodi aro kichu kotha thakke. Jodi aro kichu kotha thakke, 
বলে ফেলো কারণ জীবনটাই এখন অ্যালুমিনিয়াম ঘসতে ঘসতে ঘষা বিবর্ণ জীবনের মতো স্বাধীন বর্ণহীন কিছু বলার ছিল যত ফেলে রাখা মূর্খামে বলে ফেলো যত তাড়াতাড়ি পারো বলে ফেলো আমি জানি তুমি হয়তো বলবে বৃষ্টি ধোয়া ঘাস বলবে বোগেল ভ্যালিয়ার রং কেন গাড়ো কিংবা বলবে আকাশের মেঘ কি ইন্টারনেট ছুঁয়ে আছে ছুঁয়ে আছে অথচ ডিস্কে রেখে তো সমস্ত অনিচ্ছা ইন্টার কমে বেঁধেছি তোমাকে আধুনিক এস এম এস তত আধুনিক নয় যেমন করে লম্বা বিনুনিতে আকাশের চাঁদ ভরা যায় বলে ফেলো সব বলে ফেলো থ্রি ডি নিয়ে পিভিআরে যতদিন যন্ত্র দানবের মুখে থাকবে না কোন সানগ্লাস বলে ফেলো পোস্ট মডার্ন পোয়েট্রি অ্যান্ড নাও আই এম রিসার্চিং অ্যাবাউট পোস্ট মডার্ন পোস্ট মডার্ন মিনস সাবজেক্টস অ্যান্ড ওয়ার্ডস উইল বি পোস্ট মডার্ন মাই ইংলিশ পোয়েম pendulum the pendulum today's lifestyle resembles a faithful wall clock announcing a series of scripted moments of the daily life a bunch of cool memories with unrealistic dreams bearing an epitaph of soul searching movements all scripted in a geometric style of happening sometimes i want to reach the higher plane of life and hope to touch the pinnacle of satisfaction but it always eludes indifferent to everything around the pendulum rotates endlessly and untiringly with accuracy and infallible set of motion today's lifestyle resembles a faithful wall clock announcing a series of scripted moments of the daily life thank you very much thank you that thank you thank you thank you <laughs> that, that, that was jay shri who recited in bengali and in english pendulum so beautiful ma'am thanks you thanks for coming and thanks for thanks to all thanks to all my friends and thank you all. please welcome our next poet our next poet is yes she is uh, everywhere and she is uh, a brilliant teacher i would say Uh, she writes uh, writes in telugu and english and she is a wonderful writer i would say please welcome suvarna p yeah namaste namaste sir good evening all of you good evening prasanna sir and uh, everybody uh, these three months uh, four months i i missed this platform now i am very much fortunate and uh, happy to be a part of this great platform and i wish you all good evening and due to your training in ncert i have missed this platform now i am back, i am back to this again so i am going to recite a poem on the nature which i have experienced in the ncert in uh, nature this is mysore related poetry so that is why uh the title of the poem is walking daisy walking daisy in the midst of laughing grasses dancing dandelions swinging branches gossiping birds whispering leaves i am as a walking daisy in the midst of laughing grasses dancing dandelions swinging branches gossiping birds 
whispering leaves and as a walking daisy walking along sipping nature's nectars humming with winds walking along sipping nature's nectars humming with winds sipping nature's pleasures of lullabies fascinating fluttering butterflies trying to clean my little fingers fascinating fluttering butterflies trying to clean my little fingers as i am the little lilies lingering on my flowing heads little lilies lingering on my flowing heads in the midst of laughing grasses smiling grass blossoms i am as a walking daisy in the midst of laughing grasses smiling grass blossoms i am as a walking daisy not in shrubby crest rabbits i am as a walking being the sipping with the quiet yes ma'am okay is it audible i am i audible sir yes it was audible but it was you know it was Hello? in the bits in <laughs> it, it could not uh, ah the net yes yes uh, yeah, yeah yeah we could hear you but it was you know it was quite uh, walking along mm -hmm. go ahead go ahead man i lost the net connection in between i think so uh, singing nature's pleasures of lullabies fascinating fluttering butterflies trying to cling my little fingers as i am there sis little lilies lingering on my flowing heads in the middle of laughing grasses in the midst of laughing grasses smiling grass blossoms so i am as a walking daisy not a shrugging shrubs during my wails to touch my softest fabrics i am as a walking daisy humming with winds walking along sipping sipping singing with the choirs of nature songs of monsoons and the psalms of the almighty nurturing by the nature's pleasures of no measures thank you sir beautiful bam so you become words word <laughs> yeah thank you so much time not that so beautiful beautiful uh, it's full of nature and thank so you, subtle you, one and uh, quite poisy i would say smooth <laughs> smooth rendition smooth poem i would say experience to that that's why yeah 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 thank you thank you thanks for coming and yes please keep coming and yes that was so on my dear friends please give a round of applause felt this the atmosphere of the mysore yeah thank you thank you sir thank you. thank you so much everybody thank you thank you please welcome our next poet our mesh <laughs> uh, time to have thank you thank you time to have open mic dean ins please welcome he's a part of our anthology called manshatvam and we such a honor you know for us for to be here you know he has he made it to do a book then go ahead. go ahead yes good good evening uh let's see let me find let me find a couple of things i have a a couple of tankas to read and then a short uh a short poem And if I can find them, well, I'll just read. I can here. I have a woman. She is right here next to me. We have good loving. Every day I see her smile. She sends me like no other. This is a short piece that I just wrote yesterday. Right. Uh, you asked for some small piece of heaven. Oh, I'm sorry. Now I found my other tonka. I got the line in the wrong place. Uh, <clears throat> this is another tonka. This would be our home. 
I want to brush your hair here, waking up with you, the world's terrors fall away. You release me at moonrise. Now the next little piece is, uh, you ask for some small piece of heaven. Here, take this shovel of sand, this bucket of salt water, make the best of it on that windy red granite tor, on that shadeless tolman, make your home, farm these gravels of field, farm these fields of gravel under deep stars tonight, eat stone soup. Thank you. Well, Dan, thank you, thank you, Dan, thank you, thanks for coming. And yes, Dan, Dan has this open mic time to wear an open mic every Thursdays. I mean, like Wednesday, it happens for us uh, Thursday. So you could all join. It's a wonderful platform that poets gather, and he has a couple of workshops too. He's running. So, Dan, please, if you could just uh, sit, uh, you know, could just, you know, <laughs> so you could just go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> you could share the link. <laughs> okay, don't. Uh, please welcome our next poet. Our next poet is a wonderful poet who writes in Bengali, Hindi, and English. Mili Das. Please welcome. Mili Das. Mili Das. Ma'am, Mili. Uh, yeah. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Uh Prashnuji, actually, I am uh, now I am uh, we are going uh, coming to Pujo Pandal Puja hopping Pandal hopping. Now Durga Puja is going on. That is why now the queue of the line. See it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could uh, we could have the glimpse of that. <laughs> yes. So Here on the line and coming to Puja Pandal, and I'm joining with you. Thank you so much for your invitation. Lots of love to all of you and happy Sharudia to all of you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Not going to read. <laughs> so, anyways, that is not possible for you. But yes, thanks for coming. That was Miridas who joined us and who, you know, they have, you know, given a glimpse of. Uh, the poetic uh, this thing or no festivity that's happening around so thank you ma'am thanks for coming yeah so that brings us to the end of the show today's uh you know reading and please uh, join us for the next sunday maybe you could just you know go, go a couple of poems Ma, yes Russian, uh, has a short poem so please Ram, yeah. go ahead question can i read a poem that uh yes yes please go ahead cheer us up Yes, yes, Actually, you know, when we were, uh, we're just two sisters, and I don't have a brother. And when we were young, uh, and uh, a cousin or somebody came visiting us, and she had a little boy. And we were all the time being deprived of everything, because that boy's name was Bablu. And when we would say, why is he getting this? And she would say, Bablu is a boy. So this is a feminist poem, okay? It's called Bablu is a boy. Now in Bengal, we eat the fish head is a very prized uh, bit of food. Bablu will eat the fish head because it is very good for the brain. Why only he should eat it? That's how we became rebellious, you know. We became very rebellious because of that Bablu. Bablu will eat the fish head because it's very good for the brain. Why only he should eat it? I must eat it too. No, Bablu is a boy. To study, Bablu will go to America. And me, I also want to go. We save for your wedding, dear girl. A prince will take you away. Why not for my education? Because Bablu is a boy. Wake up, come help in the kitchen. Why don't you call Bablu? He will get late for school. I will get late too. For Bablu, it matters. And for me, you're a girl, darling. It's not your job to take up a job. I like Bablu's fighter plane toy. It is for him because he's a boy. Yes, for you, my darling princess, I'll buy a pretty Barbie doll in a pink gauze, frilly, frock lace and all. What is so special about Bablu? He's only just a boy. He too wants to play with my Barbie toy. 
Oh, no, no, we can't let him do that. He's, after all, a mighty boy. He's not like you, a sassy girl. Mablu is a boy. He will choose to be a superman. No, in India, the boy is a very important person. You know, girls are not given so much importance, so this poem comes out of that. Oh, no, we can't let him do that. He's, after all, a mighty boy. He will choose to be a superman, a doctor or an engineer, or fly a fighter plane into the deep blue sky. He will conquer the world. He will travel far and wide. In the biggest cars he will ride. The world will stand aside because Mablu is a boy. I'm a girl. I will do the same. I'll carve my own name. I will earn a world of fame. I'll put Bablu and the boys to shame. I'll go to school one day. I will rule because I'm a girl. I'll make sure there are no wars. Men make wars. And women create life. We cook and feed and nurture. We don't feed on the dead like vultures. One day there will be peace. And we women will make wars cease. So I think if more women are have power in their hands, we will want to save our children. We will want to keep everything safe. So maybe you should give us more power. Thank you so much. Quite a uh, lighter one, but yet it has a uh, latent uh, meaning and a message uh, that has be subtly conveyed. So beautiful, man. That was so. Thank you uh, so uh, much. Thank you so much. <laughs> that was the end note, maybe to the, for today. <laughs> Dance, we love you having you uh, in the, on this platform. Thanks, ma'am. Yes, please, my dear friends. I share the uh, link in the chat box. So you could just share it and click it, and you could just you know. <laughs> you know what you got what to do thank you thanks for joining see you next time Same thank time you so much person now thank, thank you everybody you. thank you man. thank you bye bye